Okay, I hope you can hear me okay. I'm trying not to be too loud because I'm sitting in my backyard and my neighbors are in their backyard and I'm a little shy about this whole situation. Um, but I wanted to do it in my backyard because it's a beautiful day and even though you can't really see, I'm sitting under a plum tree that I have in my backyard that's getting ready to... Um, the fruit's getting pretty ripe, it's getting close to being ready, and there's some beautiful like ivy back here that you can't really see, um, and it's just really nice. And so the sun is going to be kind of weird on my face throughout the video, but that's what I wanted to do. So, um, welcome to my little knitting video for update for, I guess, things I've done in July and some plans I have for August. Um, I've done, I feel like I've done a lot of knitting in July, but I don't really feel like I have that much to show for it. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the stuff I've worked on, some dye projects I've done, some books and um, yarn that I've purchased, and just kind of talk you through all things knitting related. Um, so I'll start with my finished objects. Um, my first finished object I don't have with me because I gifted it to its intended recipient and I, but I will put a lovely picture a couple pictures in here as I'm talking about it it is a baby blanket by a friend for a friend of mine she's having her third little baby and she's having a boy this time um, and I made a, a blanket for her last baby that she the little girl she uses it all the time still she's like pushing she's two years old now and still uses the blanket all the time and it just like makes me feel really happy to see that she still uses it and loves it um, so I wanted to make one for her next um, baby as well. And so the pattern that I used is just called Baby Blanket um, and it's by Claudia Q for Unit Toronto, a Canadian yarn store um, that occasionally posts patterns. It's a really, really pretty pattern. Um, I did make some modifications to the pattern because I wanted to make the blanket with cotton that I had used and dyed with black beans that I'd use for my swept away sweater that I've talked about previously and I'll put a picture of here as well. It's kind of, it's a cotton, just a 100% natural cotton that I harvested from an old sweater that I bought at a thrift store and then dyed naturally with black bean water. So I had posted a video where I talked about that sweater. Dave commented in the video saying she loved the, the color of the yarn. So I was like, oh, I have like a good amount of this yarn left. I will use it to make a blanket for Dana's baby. Um, so the problem was that the pattern called for more yarn than I had. I had probably like 400 meters of, or like 150 maybe grams of the um, yarn left. And I initially wanted to make a different pattern with it. I think I had already talked about it as well. I talked about it on the last video that I did. Ah, okay. So I had previously wanted to make the Liepa baby blanket by Woolen Berlin in with this yarn. Um, because I thought it would be really pretty. Um, but I started it and well, first of all, the pattern called for way more yarn than I had. So I knew I was gonna kind of have to scale it down. So I scaled it down, just cast it on fewer stitches and started knitting it. And I got probably like four inches in and I just realized it wasn't gonna be big enough. So I ripped it out and looked for a new pattern and I came across this baby blanket pattern from Unit. Um, and I liked that it was knit from the center out. So it's kind of, it's knit in the round and you just increase every other round to make it into a square. Um, and I liked that I could do it that way because I could just knit until I ran out of yarn and then be finished. So it would just be as big as it would be, would be and then I would finish. So I started as written in the pattern, did the stock and nip. It's, ma it's made of like different bands of different stitches, which I thought was really pretty and fun. So I started with the first band, it's just stock and net, and then I did a band of eyelet stitches and then I did a band of garter rib, and then the pattern as written calls for the next band of eyelet stitches, but I didn't want it to have all eyelet in the middle because I thought like the middle of the blanket is where your like covers most of the baby's body. And so I wanted it to be like, have some substance to it, not just be whole, so it would be a little bit warmer. It's obviously made of cotton, so it's not super warm, but babies don't usually need like a super, super warm blanket when they're young. Um, so instead of doing the eyelet stitches on the fourth band I did a like zigzag kind of chevron stitch with pearl bumps on a stockinette base um, and then I did another couple garter rows and then I did the double seed stitch um 
or double moss stitch kind of round and then I did the eyelet stitches and then I ran out of yarn <laughs> so I did three rounds of eyelet stitches and then I did a border um, which I did I, I I was planning on doing the border I was just planning on doing it all in one color originally but I ran out of yarn so I had to make like an emergency craft store run and I ended up just getting some like pretty inexpensive yarn from well I went to a creative reuse that's near me and they didn't really have what I was looking for and I went to a yarn store and they didn't really have what I was looking for so I ended up just going to Joanne and I got I don't think I brought it out here with me did I no it was just that I think it's called sugar and cream that like super cheap 100% cotton yarn that is at like every craft store and I just got it in like the navy blue color um, and did the border in that and garter and I didn't do any increases on the border and I probably should have but it turned out really cute I'm really happy with it it's super pretty the pattern you can either knit it at a three point on a 3.5 millimeter needle or a five millimeter needle depending on the gauge or the weight of your yarn um, I think the weight of my yarn was kind of between the two recommended but I decided to go up to the five millimeter needle because it would knit up faster and I was kind of in a time crunch and because I would rather it be more drapey and loose than super dense because babies are very temperature sensitive and you don't want them to be too warm so I just wanted to have a really nice drape in it it's a little bit looser and because of the the eyelets and everything it's really drapey and really flowy and soft but it did turn out to be a good size I should have measured it but I didn't um, but it was probably like I don't know two two and a half feet square um, so good size and it turned out great I was really happy with it turned out I have my I have like kind of filled out a, Ravel, a Ravelry project page so I'll link that down below for you so you can check it out I'm really happy with how that project turned out I think she will like it I hope it's I think it's gonna look really cute on a little baby boy and it'll be great so that was my finished object number one my second finished object that I have is this little sweater for my niece I talked about it in my last video um, I had done the body I just hadn't done the sleeves so I finished the sleeves and here it is it's just a little simple raglan it's the good old raglan pattern on Ravelry I don't remember the designer off the top of my head but I will link it down below it's a free pattern um, it's super easy it's got some short rows in the back I think or it's got some short row shaping so it's really nicely shaped and then I just did a little chart with her name on it on the front and it's knit in Cascade 220 Quattro which is discontinued and I got the yarn two skeins of it I think it's so it's ended up being I think they were 50 gram skeins so I think this has ended up, be, uh, ended up being 100 grams maybe 200 I think it was 50 grams so 100 grams of yarn um, and I did end up having to knit the body a little bit shorter because I was running out of yarn really played yarn chicken on this and I did run out on the ribbing um, and so I ended up having to do like a really tight Italian bind off but I think it still looks nice um, the only thing I have left to do on this I've, w I've woven in the ends and everything I just have to kind of tidy up the inside because of the way that I did the color work on the front I didn't knit it it's knit in the round so I was gonna have tr I didn't want to have like crazy floats or whatever so I ended up just cutting the yarn every time so I need I think I'm going to put a piece of fabric over it I'll like block all the ends nicely and then I'll probably just sew a little square of fabric over it so the ends don't bother her and so she doesn't pull on them she's little so um, it'll stay nice but it turned out really cute I'm really happy with it I'm gonna do another one for my other niece um, my sister's daughter and then um, we were on vacation this last week and I was talking to one of James's cousins and she was saying that she wanted something like this for her son so I may end up making one for her um, and I have another niece and another nephew I need to make things for for Christmas so I don't know how many more of these I'm gonna end up making but it turned out really cute I'm really happy with it I hope she likes it I think she will um, yeah so that was this and then so those are really the only two finished objects I have um, in my last video I talked about um, the petite flower sock that I had started working on it was like a brown and white striped um, and I got through almost like through the heel turn and gusset of the first sock and then I tried it on and realized like it was gonna be it was way too small like the color work was super stretched I think just because it's color work the, it ended up getting a lot tighter than I would normally knit um, so it got super tight and it wasn't gonna fit so I ripped it back and I do want to knit that sock again 
Um, but I just took a break from it for a little while because I wanted to focus on this lovely lady here. So this is my first um, work in progress. This is the coming soon sweater by Paula M, I think is the designer's name. She has some really pretty designs. I was, I know I had originally thought, talked when I talked about this as a plan in my last video, I was thinking of doing it. Um, I was thinking of either doing the Patenton sweater or um, another sweater by a small, two sisters that are small designers. I will link them down below. But I looked through the project pages of those and just didn't love the way, especially the Patenton sweater, which I've had on my Ravelry saved for like ever. I just actually knit it up, didn't look really how I wanted it to. So I found this one and it is knit in a half fisherman's rib, but with a yarn over, which is not a technique I've ever seen before. So this is actually the outside. And then the inside looks like this, which is the more traditional kind of half fisherman's ribbed pattern. And I am knitting this on 3.5 millimeter needles. And I'm using, I know I, um, one skein of mohair one strand of mohair, which is, this is the African Expressions Hope mohair in the color 6057. I got this on like super, super sale from a yarn store that was closing. Um, so it was like 350 a skein, which was great. It's 80% mohair, 20% polyamide. Um, it's not the softest mohair I've ever felt, but I really like it. I like the color. It's kind of like this purpley grayish tone. And then I originally was pairing it with this, um, kind of lilac-y purple yarn. Um, and this is like a, probably like a DK. I'm not great at telling wor um, yarn weights and because I do a lot of my yarn reclaimed, I don't actually know what the, the weight would be. So it looks like this. It's too stranded and I knit like the entire body almost to separate the sleeves with it just like this with the one strand of mohair and the double strand, like just this yarn. And I was like halfway through the yarn that I have of the, that I had of this, it was really dense and my hand, it was hurting my, my wrists because I was like using this thick yarn on small needles. And so I was talking to my mom and I was like, I don't know what I should do. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to ride a yarn. I went to my local yarn store and like with a strand of this yarn and found some yarns that were really close that I could use if I ran out. Um, so I could have bought more and just kind of like with the mohair, I figured it would kind of like blend a little bit better. But I was talking to my mom and she told me like, if you're gonna do that, you need to go do it now and you start alternating skeins. It's like, that seems a lot of work. And then the, because this is a two ply yarn, I just decided to unply it. So I have now gotten to this point. I've done the whole body separated for sleeves, knit one sleeve. Um, and I'm now working on the other sleeve. I'm just doing the sleeves first because it's faster. And um, I was watching the Knitting Pickle podcast with Laura the other day, and she said that she likes to do sleeves first because then you don't have to like flop the body around with you while you're knitting because when you're knitting sleeves, they kind of twist a lot and having all that weight of the body while you're knitting the sleeves is a lot. So I'm doing the sleeves first, but I've done all of this with, where's my ball? With just, one little strand of that purple yarn. So basically I took this two ply and unplied it. And I've spent a lot of time just like, I, basically the best way to do this I found is to like wind it into a cake, put like a hair clip or something heavy on the ball and then just pull the strands so that it kind of untwists itself. And it's actually worked out really well. It's a sil super squishy, there's leaves on my sweater now. It's still super squishy and soft. The fabric is really pretty. I like how it's worked out. Um, I'm really happy with the result. So it was a good call to unply the yarn and use it like that. It's very slow to knit this whole thing. Like it took me probably like a week, a week and a half to do the raglan increases in the body. And then I was just on a trip um, and I spent basically like a week doing the sleeve. Um, and it doesn't have a ton of decreases. Like actually the reason I picked this sweater because it has some really interesting de details. Um, I really like the wide raglan band. It's 11 stitches wide, which I've never done before. And then the decreases on the sleeves are also kind of interesting. There's like, instead of decreasing evenly, um, 
you kind of have like another band here and de decrease on either side. So the shape ends up being, this is a mess. My foot is falling asleep. This slips straight. The shape ends up being kind of like pointy. It just like slopes down. Um, so that was really cool. And that's why I picked this pattern. I really like it. It's just slow because it's ribbed. So you're switching back and forth between knit and purl every round and it's on tiny little needles, 3.5 millimeters. So it's going fine. I'm knitting the second size, the small. And then the other adjustment I've made is on the sleeves. Um, it's originally just written with four, three millimeter, three centimeters of twisted rib for the sleeves. Um, but I was worried that they were going to be really loose because this seems like a wide cuff. So I, I knitted it double long with like this pearl bump in the middle. So I'm going to fold it over on the inside and then put elastic in it so that it'll be like a good tightness on my wrists. Um, another reason I wanted to do that is because I kind of want the sweater to be reversible. This like kind of puffy side of the fabric is the right side in the pattern, but I do also really like the wrong side, which is that very traditional like brioche fisherman's rib kind of look. Um, so because I wanted the sweater to be reversible, I had originally started knitting the cuff in a full twisted rib and it was taking forever and I, it was just so loose because there's not like as much stretch in a full twisted rib. So I decided to knit it double long and fold it over in just a half twisted rib and then I could sew it down and put the elastic in and it'll look a little bit better um, if I decide to reverse it. So that was a lot of words about this project. but. I'm really happy with how it's going so far. It's gonna be a little oversized, but it'll be very cozy for fall. I love the color. I like the way that the two yarns are working together. It's originally, it's not meant to be knit with mohair, but I wanted to because I had this mohair and it was a good color kind of to blend with this. So here it is. It looks really weird right now with just one very long sleeve and a very short body, but that's where I'm at on that. And then my other work in progress is da -da -da -da, this sock. Um, I started a different sock because I was not in love with the one I had done before. And so I knit the blanket and then I knew I was going on vacation. <clears throat> I originally wanted to film this video like a week and a half ago before I went on vacation, but I finished that blanket like at 11.45 PM the day before I had to leave. So I did not have time to film. So I had the sweater to bring on vacation with me and then I wanted something a little bit smaller. So I started this sock, which I actually only started two days ago. It's Monday today and I started it on Saturday, um, but I'm really happy with it. It is the Sopin sock pattern. I don't remember the designer off the top of my head, but I will put it in the description box. Um, it's just a pretty simple sock. The pattern is written with a one by one rib, but I ended up doing a two by two. And then it just has these like faded stripes on it. Um, I also have made some adjustments. You're supposed to do like four stripes on the leg, but I wanted my cuff, heel, and toe to all be the same color, so I only did three. I also like my socks a little bit shorter, um, and I'm about halfway through the foot now. It's a really cute pattern. I like it a lot. It's very easy to follow, very well written, just a normal um, slip stitch, heel, flap, and gusset sock construction. Um, and I'm really happy with it. This is knit this with <coughs> a yarn from like a Ralph Lauren sweater that I took apart. Um, and it was originally, so this, it's a very, very light kind of thin fingering weight yarn. And originally it's held double in the sweater. So like when I pulled it apart, it was more like this, like these two together. And that was what I had originally started knitting that other sock in. And it was, it just didn't, was the gauge was a little off. Um, so I unplied that one as well, which it wasn't twisted. So it wasn't really unplying. I just pulled the two strands apart. Um, and then it was this, it's, so the sweater came in this white color and then this pinky color is actually a color that I dyed. So that's it for finished object or horse in progress. Number one is this sock. And now we'll move on to dye projects. It's a lovely segue. Um, I did a couple dye projects this just like last week or the week before I went on vacation because 
I had a few things in mind. So I've been experimenting with natural dyeing for like mm, a little over a year now. Um, I did some natural dye projects last year, some avocado pit dye, some onion skin dye that turned out really well. And then I did in the spring, I did my black beans and I did some yarn with avocado, some more yarn with avocado. And then, um, so because I live in Washington, there are wild blackberries everywhere. They grow all over the place. There's a bush in my backyard. There's a huge bush down the street that I go forage like all the time. Um, and I knew that you could die with blackberries. So that is what, oh my gosh, the pink of this sock yarn is that white. This is the base color. And then this is the color that's dyed with blackberries. And I have it in a hank somewhere around here in my lap and I wanna show it to you. Also my camera battery's flashing, so that's good. This is a, just an absolute disaster. Okay, here we go. So here's the hank. And it's kind of this like blush, pinky, purpley color. It's really pretty. Um, by the way, this yarn is a 70% wool, 20% Angora, 10% nylon blend. Got that off the tag. Um, so it's really nice and soft, but it's sturdy enough for socks because it has the wool and the nylon. Um, but it turned out really pretty. And I did some experiments. I, um, I just did two little like mini skeins and I mordanted one with salt and mordanted one with alum and they turned out like basically identical. So um, yeah, you can kind of see. <coughs> it's showing up a little more pink on the camera than it is in person. It's kind of like a deep mauve, pinky purpley color. It's very pretty, yeah. It looks more purple and a little bit lighter in person than it does on the camera, but it's really pretty. I'm really happy with it. I might not have enough to do of just what I have right now to do both of these socks. So I may have to make some more. Um, kind of want to make some more. I would be happy to give some away if that's something that people are interested in. I think it's a really gorgeous color and I have so many blackberries in my freezer because I just take them off the bush. I don't want them to go to waste, obviously. So I take them off the bush and I use them. Um, so I have a lot. So if you guys would be interested in a little giveaway with that, let me know. Happy to do that. Um, I'm probably going to dye some more yarn before the end of the season. And then I also did some commercial dyeing because, well, not commercial, like commercially bought dye because I had some yarn that my mom had given me. It's like, I think it's a superwash merino and it was like a primary red. Um, I had knit like an entire sweater in this yarn last year. I'll put like a picture of it here so you can see kind of the original color of the yarn. And I knit this whole sweater in it and I didn't love the way that it fit. So I pulled it apart. Um, and I didn't love the color of it because just, I don't think I like a really bright primary red works on my coloring. Um, I like like more muted tones. Um, so I decided to over dye that red with some dye just to make it a little bit more a color that I would wear um so I got a yellow dye and a blue dye just like a writ powdered dye and did some experimenting and mm -hmm. decided on like a kind of greenish color would look good dyed over the red to make it more of like a rusty red so I mixed the dye up dye bath turned out more blue so the yarn turned out a little more purple than I was kind of anticipating but I'm actually really happy with it so I had to do it in batches because my dye pot is not huge and I have like six or 700 grams of this yarn. So they're kind of, it turned out two different colors. So this is the first dye bath I did. And it's like a, I would say it's like a garnet kind of color. It looked a lot more purple when it was wet. So it looks, it's a very dark red, I would say, um, with kind of purpley tones in it. I'll get some pictures so you can kind of see better the color of it. And then towards the end, you can see that this, is a much more like bright red um, yarn. So these are the same base and just, this was the beginning of the dye bath and this was the end. Um, so if I do end up knitting a garment with the yarn, I have like six skeins of this, I think, and about three of them are this color and three of them are this color. I'm gonna either need to do a second dye bath on this or alternate skeins. So unsure what I'm gonna do, they don't look, no, they do look pretty different. I was gonna say they don't look as different on, on in real life as they do on camera, but they are like kind of different. So I feel like if I alternate skeins, it would be fine. Although I'm not really pleased about that. It's a lot of work. So maybe I'll do a second dye bath. I don't know, but here they are. They turned out really pretty. Very happy with those. 
And then I have seen so many pretty like speckled yarns for socks lately and I'm just feeling like I wanna make a lot of socks. So I decided to try and speckle some yarn with just the dye bath that I had made up. So it's this is that same white base that I used <coughs> for the raspberries or the blackberry dye. And I took different concentrations of that dye bath that I had mixed up um, and then just some of the straight plain blue and the straight plain yellow to make this kind of marbled skein. And I was intending it to turn out more speckled, but it kind of turned out kind of watercolory. So it's got all sorts of colors in it. It's mostly blue, some green, and then some kind of like yellow specks in it. So this is just like straight up that blue powdered dye dumped on here, on there. The yellow speckles you see in there are the yellow dye kind of sprinkled on and then there's different concentrations of blues and greens through here um i think it will make a very pretty sock when i knit it up and i have a good blue i can use for our contrast cuff heel toe that i can use with it um or i could just do it all one color we'll see i have like probably this is a bigger skein than i did for the raspberries so i have plenty in here for two socks it's probably like 50 grams um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it's pretty, I want to keep experimenting with dyeing just because it's fun and unique and because I already use yarn that's like one of a kind, might as well just make it more fun. So that is this and that's all my dye projects. It's fun. You should try it. Okay, now we're moving on to acquisitions, which is not normally a large section for me, but it's been a few weeks, like probably like five or six weeks now since my last video and I basically just succumbed to the monster and I all I do is watch knitting videos and think about knitting constantly so I've just acquired some things so the first I guess thing that I acquired this month was just some new cables for my knitting needles my interchangeable needles I use the Addy Click just regular set um they're like the four I think inch needles at a click turbo I think is what they are um, and they go from a 3.5 millimeter to a 10 millimeter they're great I love them my husband got them for me for Christmas three years ago probably almost I use them all the time I love them they're great um, but I needed some more cables because the set only came with three cables and I was working on that blanket which was a huge project and the sweater raglan inc increases which was like almost 400 stitches so I just needed more cable capacity so I just got some more Addy Click cables. They're blue instead of the gold that they originally come with. I think I ended up with like a 40 centimeter, an 80 centimeter, a 60 centimeter, and a 20 centimeter or something. Something just like kind of standard. I'll list it down below so you can know for sure. But just three more of these. That was my first acquisition. I got it from my local yarn store. Um, they're great. And then, um, I got these tags that I was really excited about. I've just been really wanting to have like personalized tags with my name on them that I could sew into my projects so that if they're either just for me or when I give gifts that it makes them a little more, more special. So I got these. Come on, focus. They say handmade by Anna Passy Trevino. I got them from a little, a cute little Etsy shop. They look like this. They come on like ribbons. And I got them from a little Etsy shop called Label Weavers. It's probably backwards for you, but they did a great job. They came super fast, very high quality. I'm really happy with them. You can choose the font and the ribbon color and the thread color, and you can mix fonts and it's great. You can do little symbols on there. Highly recommend, they were great. I, if I, when I run out of these, I will buy more because I love them. They look so pretty in my knitwear. I'll put some pictures in here of like stuff that I've sewn them into already. They're amazing i love them and i think it was like 20 dollars for 25 tags which i feel like is a decent price and i think shipping was free so great love these and then my needle buying continued because after watching a lot of podcasts and feeling like i wanted to go on a sock kick i so i usually have stop i'm just talking and talking so i have previously knit socks on double points because i don't love magic loop it just is kind of a faff to twist it around um so i have a huge set of bamboo double points that i bought on amazon 
probably like a year and a half, a year and a half ago when I was making a sweater and needed them for sleeves. Um, and it's fine, but they're really long. They're probably like six inch or seven inches long here. I have them here because I was just using them. Here we go. So these are the double points that I use. They are just bamboo. These are the two point tack, two five millimeter needles. Um, and they're super long. They're actually probably like six inches, maybe a little bit more, maybe like eight. They're very long. So when you're knitting on a super small circumference like a sock, it's just kind of annoying. Um, and for sleeves as well, I would just always much rather knit with a circular because it goes so much faster than doing magic loop or doing double points. So I have just like recently has been working on sweaters. There is a lovely creative reuse store here in Seattle called Seattle Recreative where they take donations of craft supplies and you can buy them for like super cheap. So I always go check there first for needles and when I was making my swept away sweater, I w the sleeves are knit on a 4.5 so I went there and got just like a 16 inch. Okay, sorry for the interruption again. My camera battery died and then my landlord came by and it was super embarrassing because it's weird to make videos of yourself. So yeah, anyway. Um, yes, so I bought a 4.5 millimeter, just like short 16 inch probably, Clover Takumi to do the sleeves. I just would rather do sleeves and socks and small circumference things on a circular. So, um, I then I was just trying to decide if I wanted to buy like an interchangeable set of small circulars. I was looking at the Addy ones for a while, but they only go down to 16 inches. And then I was looking at the Chiagu short tip ones, but the sizing was weird. They're either like zero or like 1.5 millimeters to three millimeters or 3.5 to eight and i wanted kind of like in between that range i wanted like 2.25 to four millimeters and they didn't sell a set like that and no one sold a set like that so then i was looking at fixed circulars i'd heard good things about the chagu but they're expensive they're like 10 or 12 dollars but i'm between 10 and 17 dollars a pair which is just a lot so I finally was, then I found out about the Knitter's Pride small circular needles and they have, it's the dun dun dun, Zing line that they have. So, cause I prefer metal needles generally to bamboo or plastic. Um, and I lost my turn of thought. I prefer metal needles. And so that's what the Zing are. So I decided to order some while I was on my trip in Utah because I was working on the sleeve of that sweater and I just figured it would be a lot easier to do it on the short circulars than on the double points. Um, and I actually found the Knitter's Pride ones on Lovecrafts and they just so happened to, on the day that I was shopping, be like 25% off all needles and stuff. So the only thing was that it was gonna take a while to ship. So I ended up ordering the 3.5 millimeter needles on Amazon to my vacation place in Utah because I wanted to use them for that sweater I was working on. Um, so I bought the nine inch circular Chiaogu metal needles and then I bought the 12 inch circular Chiaogu bamboo needles because that's what they had on Amazon for like quick shipping. Sorry about the airplane, can't really do anything about it. Um, so I bought those and I preferred for a sleeve the 12 inch circulars because this sleeve has like 80 something stitches on it and just on a nine millimeter that's really really small. Um, so I took it inside. Um, I'm using the Chiaogu Bamboo 12 inch circulars 3.5 millimeter for my sweater sleeves and I'm really liking that. The only problem now is that I had ordered like four pairs of the Lovecraft needles in a nine inch. So, and they just came today, which is why I'm filming the video today. I've been waiting for them all day. So they showed up. Here are my little Zing Knitter's Pride needles. And I got four sets because that was kind of what I needed. I got a 2.25, a 2.5, a three millimeter and a four millimeter because those are just, so now I have shorter circulars in a 2.25, 2.5. I have 2.75 shorts that I bought at the creative reuse place, actually. Took them inside too on accident. 
um, oh no, they're right here. They're like brandless metal. Um, but I bought these for like $2. And then I now have a three inch and I have a 3.5 and I have a four and a 4.5 and a six <laughs> because those are the sizes I use most often. So now I have like a robust collection. But the only thing is that I've now decided that I like 12 inch circulars more for sleeves. So I'm thinking I'm gonna send the four millimeter nine inch needles back and change them for a 12 inch because they have the same needles in a 12 inch, the Zing fixed circular in a 12 inch. Um, but for a sock, I, as soon as they came in the mail today, I grabbed them and started, oh my gosh, this video is probably super confusing. I'm sorry, it doesn't make any sense. Um, but as soon as these needles came in the mail today, I started working on them using the 2.25 millimeters on my sock and I really like them. So I'm gonna keep the sock sized ones in the nine inch and I'm gonna keep the sleeve sized ones in a 12 inch. <laughs> That's very confusing, but anyway, they're great. I really like these. I mean, I have only knitted with them for like three or four rounds of this tiny little sock, but I really like them. Anyway, I really like these. Um, so the Chiaogu metal mini circulars have like the braided, it's the red coated kind of like braided metal cord on them it's really stiff and i didn't like that for such a small circumference just because i felt like it was hard to actually get them around the bamboo ones have a plastic cord super bendy um these knitter's pride ones also have a plastic cord and they are also super bendy um the needles are tiny like that's probably like a two inch needle it's very small but doesn't bother me um so yes the 2.5s I got because I'm going to make some mittens soon and I'm really excited about. I also don't have double points in a 2.5. So that's what these are going to be for. Um, and then I'm probably also going to send the 3 millimeters back because my mother, who I was just on vacation with and who is my knitting enabler, um, brought me some 3 millimeter needles. I think they're a 12 or a 14 inch round, um, but she brought them for me. Are they in here? Yes. I think they're like closer to a 16 but they're great and they work so um and they're bamboo which generally i don't like bamboo but i do like how pointy they are um i don't they don't have a brand on them but they might be clovers i don't actually know but i'll keep these unless she needs them back and i will give them back to her um but yeah so i have these for three and yeah they're probably like a 16 maybe a 12 but so I'm gonna send some of these back. I'll probably order some other ones, but I'm really happy with them. And I like the little color. This is the first time I've used Knitter's Pride. They're really nice. They're a little sharper than my Addy needles, which I like. For s s tiny little threads, I just like the sharper needle because it's easier to pick up the string. So I'm happy with these. Um, I also bought some little needle stoppers. I don't have any. And I was at a yarn store in Utah when I was on vacation and they had a bunch of just like clover notions on sale so i got two sets of needle stoppers for like a dollar or something um which is great because not only do they fit on my needles they also fit on the ends of my addy click cables which i don't have stoppers for so i have a connector so if i need to like put stitches on hold i'll just leave them on the cord and put the connector on but if i'm like doing multiple projects and have multiple things i need to put on hold i can now put these needle stoppers on the end of my cables and have more items on hold on the cables without having to like put them on waste yarn or anything so happy about these um there's a lot of talking that i'm not really sure makes any sense so if you're still here thanks basically i bought a bunch of needles and i'm excited about them because i'm always excited about knitting related things um but i'm almost done here i have also bought some yarn and some books so um Here's the thing about me and buying yarn. Yarn is lovely, I love it, it's beautiful. It's expensive. For like a sweater's quantity of yarn at the yarn store, you're looking between like 40 and $80. And that's a lot to me for my hobby. So I usually either um, reuse yarn from old sweaters that I buy at the thrift store, or sweaters that I've had. My mom has a lot of yarn in her stash. She's shared with me because she's lovely and generous. Um, and then occasionally I find a good yarn sale either at my creative reuse or at a thrift store. So that's what happened to me recently, probably two weeks ago, right before I went on my trip, I found this yarn at my Goodwill. 
it is this penguin wool mohair blend. Um, there are 50 grams in each ball. It's like kind of like this dark green color. Um, and they're 50 gram balls and I got seven balls for $10, which seems like a pretty good deal for me. It's like $1.25 a ball for wool mohair. It's pretty good, I would say. Um, this is a 75% wool, 20% mohair, 5% polyamide blend. It's very fuzzy. I'll show you. You can see it's got a lovely fuzz halo to it. I'm going to make a sweater with it because I think it's about a sweater's quantity. Something kind of light, but pretty. I'm very excited about this. I don't really have a project in mind for it, but some sweater of some sort. It's not itchy, which is nice. So excited about this. I have lots of it. 350 grams, so if you know. All right, friends, my card's full. I'm running out of stuff I can delete. Gotta finish this up quick. So excited about this, it'll be great. Um, then when I was on my trip, I went to this local yarn store in Utah, in Provo, and they had kind of like a clearance sale. Apparently they'd bought out inventory from another yarn store that was going out of business. Um, so I got some yarn for a really good deal. I just got this Patton's Classic Wool Worsted, er, Classic Wool. It's merino, 100%. I'm pretty sure it's superwash because it's very soft um, and like smooth, but maybe it's not. I don't know. It's 100% wool. It's very soft. It's in. Um, so the color number on this is 229. It's a lovely beige. And I'm planning to make a cardigan with this. I don't know what cardigan yet. Probably just something pretty simple. Maybe the champagne cardigan by Petite Knit or just something very simple like that. Um, but it's lovely and soft and it was like so with those needle stoppers and five skeins of this yarn it was like 750 so i got this yarn for like a dollar a skein it's 100 grams 100 percent wool and i got five skeins 500 grams so that was a bargain of the century um and then my last acquisitions for my camera fills up again are books um so at my creative reuse i got this book this is the classic British knits. It's from like the probably the early 90s or late 80s. Um, but it has some really fun patterns in it of like Fair Isle sweaters and all sorts of stuff. So I've bookmarked a couple of the patterns in here. There's like this guy. I'll put pictures in of some of the patterns that I like. Um, but I just thought it was really pretty. It cost me like two dollars and I really want to make some pretty Fair Isle sweaters. So I got this and then I had a gift card for my birthday to a local bookstore. Um, for my friend Sarah that I hadn't used. My birthday's in January, it's now July. Um, and I hadn't used it and I decided I wanted to go get a yarn book or a knitting book. So I found this book called Scandinavian Sweaters by Kristen Viola Odegaard. And there are some really, really beautiful patterns in here. Also a lot of color work stuff. This is the sweater that I really liked from this book. It's so gorgeous. It's called Cathedral Dome, um, but there are tons of beautiful beautiful patterns in here. I will also overlay some pictures of the sweaters in there. There are lots of them. They're gorgeous. I'm really excited to knit from this book. Um, I just think it'll be really fun. They have some kids patterns, some accessories, some sweaters. So I'm very excited about that. They're very, very pretty. Um, and then the last thing, this isn't really an acquisition, but it's a book that I borrowed from my local library. It's called Knitted Animal Friends. Um, so my neighbor, whose baby you may have heard earlier crying, her name is Clementine. She's adorable. I love her very much. I babysit for her like once a week, basically. And it's her first birthday in November. And so I want to make her a little gift. And I wanted to make her a little baby animal. Um, and I've made some of the Toft crocheted animals before. Um, but last Christmas, I made a really cute little knitted turtle for my niece. And it was just adorable. And I just think don't come for me here but i just think knitting is prettier than crochet it's smoother it's more elegant so i wanted to make a knitted animal and i was thinking i wanted to make a bunny and i found this at the library and they have the cutest little bunny in here so that's what i want to make her for her birthday look how cute this is it's tilly the hair she has a sweater that has carrots on it i'm obsessed with it i love it so much i don't know what yarn i'm gonna do it in I may just probably try and find something from my stash that works. I have like a, a light gray that will probably look really pretty, um, but I love it. So that's what I'm gonna make for her for her birthday. I know it's not for months, but I'm trying to get ahead on gift knits before um, the busy season and before I start back into school. So 
very long-winded video today, but lots of things to talk about. Um, as far as upcoming projects, as soon as I finish that my lavender coming soon sweater, I still want to make that beret that I talked about in my last video, the Colette beret. There are some really, really pretty color work. All right, I am giving up on my big camera because I'm tired of it running out of batteries or running out of space on the camera card. So I'm finishing this on my phone. Um, there are some really pretty color work mittens that I want to make that I found on Ravelry. It's a free pattern. They have like little flowers on them and just the sweaters for my nieces and nephews. Um, for my little niece who was born, she's only three months old. Her name's Harper. She's adorable. I love her. Um, but my sister-in-law, her mom, is obsessed with Taylor Swift and I kind of want to make her like a mini version <laughs> of the Taylor Swift cardigan for Christmas. I just think it would be really cute. I don't know if there are patterns um, around the internet for it, but I feel like I could freestyle it. It's pretty simple. It's like a moss stitch cardigan with some braids down the front and some like colored bands on the arms. Um, so that will be fun. I think that's what I want to do. I have a lot of project ideas coming up. So many things I want to make. I want to make a color sweater. I want to make a cardigan. I want to make some smaller things, some more socks with like that watercolory yarn that I made. So I have a lot of ideas. There's just so many things to knit and not enough time but I'm really excited. And as far as other things to mention, I've been watching so many knitting podcasts lately. Um, Inga from Knitting Traditions is my favorite. I'm obsessed with her. She's beautiful. She makes wonderful knits. I want to live in Norway too. Um, and she's a doctor. She's incredible. I just think she's great. Um, Penrose Knits, Laura from Penrose Knits is great. Really like her. Yes. Heather and Hop's podcast is great. Oh, and Fiber Tales. I love Fiber Tales with Leica. She's so pretty. She makes the most beautiful designs. I really want to make her home bee shawl. It's like a honeybee. It's gorgeous. If I don't end up making a cardigan with this yarn, then I will maybe make that shawl with it. I've never made a shawl before. I didn't think I was a shawl person, but I'm starting to see the appeal. The only thing that I don't love about them is that they're knit flat, but a lot of like is shawls are actually knit in the round and then steaked so she helps you out with that um besides that i have just been gardening and working and playing with yarn as i do so that is it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it um sorry for all the interruptions and location kind of shifts but you know i wanted to be outside today in this lovely weather so um, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you in an, another video. Bye.